Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Live Q&A with Dice Tower. This is the first Q&A of the year. It is New Year's. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you had a fantastic New Year's Eve because that's usually when people celebrate the holiday, not on New Year's Day itself. We did. Um, I had a great evening. Uh, we do a New Year's Eve at our church, an event, so I help plan that. I, get, I bring food. Other people bring food too. Um, and we eat. And then I did a game show. So I, you know, I don't know why it's occurred to me not to do more of these game shows at my church. I do them when we go to different conventions. So everyone had a fun time with the game show, I hope. And then I went off and shot off a whole pile of fireworks, which was a lot of fun. Then after the fireworks were over, we kind of cooled things down. There was some people there and I taught them all word on the street because they were, they said, oh, that looks complex. I'm like, no, it's not. I played it. One of the guys watching the game said that he would like the game, but he was looking for more things like Ticket to Ride. And I was like, wow. So I went and taught him Century. Me and Laura played Century with him. And then we played um, Majesty back-to-back. Uh, -back. I haven't played them back-to-back -back like that. So since I have, I like them both. But Century is definitely better than Majesty. I like them both. But when played, I mean, because I compare them to each other a lot. But I think I like Century better. Um, either way, and then we finished those with like 15 minutes to go. So we cleaned up as fast as we could, you know, put everything in the van. <laughs> and then... Uh, we saw the ball drop. Everyone said, Happy New Year. I kissed my wife. Then I said, Everyone get in the van. We're going home. And that's what we did. <laughs> Most people had wandered off by that point and had left. Um, so we shut down. You know, there was a day when midnight might be not the end of the evening. It's the end of the evening at this age. My kids aren't as thrilled about that. But it's really cool for us because so many people shoot fireworks off in South Florida. I mean, ridiculous amounts. I shoot my fireworks off at 8. 45, that's when we shot them off. So it took about 45 minutes for us to shoot them off. It was neat, cool. When at midnight, we're, let's say we're on the road around 1210, um, and we go home. It's about a 15 minute trip from the church to my home. On the way down the turnpike, on both sides, you see fireworks going off everywhere. It's like you're driving through fireworks lane. It is so cool. It is one of the neatest things. I look forward to that. I look forward to that drive home every year, just because of that. Then we get home and there's still fireworks and you hear parties everywhere. And we go to bed, except almost I had to do finish board game breakfast and, and, uh, and uh, weekend review. But once those were finished, then we went to bed. And then I got up and I said, ah, I'm not going to waste New Year's Day. So I came here and I've been recording videos most of the day, but I want to pause and do a live Q&A. That's probably way more information than any of you needed to know. But this is a week of stuff. Kickstarter, we're hoping to launch that Thursday. I say hoping because there's a bit of a snag um, but hopefully that will be cleared up by Thursday. I'm sorry, that's when we're going to launch our Kickstarter. Um, so let's go through some questions. Any ETA in your game shipment from Essen? Yes, we should get it really soon. I'm hoping to get it this week. If that doesn't happen, then we should get it next week. But that's how close we are. Have you had a chance to play the paperback expansion yet? I have not. I've not played the Zion expansion yet either. Which game does Heroes of Land and Air and Sea most similar to? Well, that's a good question. Um, Real-time strategy computer games, I think. I'm trying to think what it's close to, like building buildings and going out and fighting people. I'm not trying. I can't think of a very close. I would actually say Tiny Epic Kingdoms, probably. Um... Will you, still, will you still do long unboxing videos? Those are much, much, much better. Well, people are going to like what they like. But yes, in fact, one is going up today. Either it just went up. I'm actually not sure when it was going up. I can tell you in just a moment. Yeah, so I'm still going to do those. Um, the live unboxings happen. They usually happen at the rate of two for every three weeks-ish. That's usually where we are, right? So you'll see one in a week and then one the week after that or maybe two weeks apart, whatever. And when the Essence stuff comes in, there's going to be like six in a row. Um, so those are still going to happen. The daily unboxings is just one specific game. The daily unboxing is not replacing anything. It's just a completely new series. That's all. Um, so let me uh, look here. Boring unboxing video. Oh, yeah, it just went live two minutes ago. But don't stay, stay with me. Don't go watch that. You can see that later. Uh, let's see here. What will we play at the marathon? You know what? I have not even um, confirmed what's being played at the marathon yet, mostly because I need to get this Kickstarter launched. Once that's launched, then I'll work on the marathon. 
You said in your wish list you want a game for kids. It will be a phenomenon. I, I, I believe it could be Rhino Hero Super Battle. It could be, but it hasn't yet got to that point where I'm seeing it sold at Toys R Us and Target and Walmart and people everywhere are talking about it and you see people playing it on talk shows and things like that. That has not happened yet. Um, for 2018, can I request reviews of RPGs? No. And the reason we can't really review RPGs is because, first of all, we're barely getting board games reviewed, right? Um, there's people in this in these very comments who are upset that I haven't reviewed a specific game. I, I try to review 12 to 13 games a week, and that's still not enough, right? It's just not possible. Adding RPGs to the mix will be too hard, especially since... You can't play, you have to play an RPG, I think, much more than a board game to get a good feel for it. Um, we had a great time with that one shot that we played on Friday. We'll probably do it again. I love playing role-playing games, but I mostly cut them out of my life just because I don't have time for them. That's all. Um, would Heroes of Land and Air and Sea made your top 10? I don't know. I have to go back and review that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hopefully someone will remind me, in June we will do a 2017 Revisit It where we will tell our top 10 lists again and see what has changed. Happy New Year from Johannesburg, South Africa. Well, hello. Any New Year's resolutions? No, I don't make New Year's resolutions. I make resolutions. I just don't do them on January 1st. I just try to do them all the time. So I might say, okay, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to make this new goal or model or thing for my life. But I don't necessarily do them on January. I just say, I'm going to start it now and do it now. I usually start them on Mondays, though. Is Gloomhaven really a number one game? Well, if you go to Board Game Geek, it is. Uh, if you look at my top 100, it is. I don't know what else to tell you. Have you heard of Magic the Gathering board game Explorers of Ixalan? Yes, um, Jason and Kenny were playing it when I was leaving the game day on Saturday, um, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. It looked like magic with a little bit extra is what they mentioned. Do you kickstart games? Sometimes. Do any reviewers get paid or incentivized by companies to review their games? How do you choose which game to review? Well, I don't know if reviewers get paid or incentivized to review games. We don't get paid to review games. We, Mark Street does paid previews. We have an offer out to companies. We will do paid playthroughs of a game. You pay us and we'll do a playthrough of your game. But um, first of all, that hasn't happened yet. And but we don't get paid to review our games at all. This is something I see constantly on the internet. People are like, I, reviewers need to stop getting paid to review games. Where is this information coming from? I don't know of any reviewers who are being paid to review. I know paid previews happen, for especially for Kickstarter. But I don't know of any reviewers who are getting paid to review games. And I'm, I'm starting to think that if this is one of those things that it's being repeated often enough, so people are like, yeah, reviewers are getting paid to review games. Really? How? I, I, I would imagine that this, if, if, a, if companies were paying reviewers to pay games, that someone would have made me an offer at some point in time, right? Like a company would have said, how much do you need to review our game? That hasn't happened. I will say occasionally a new company who's new to the business will email me and say, how much does it cost to get our game reviewed? And I'm like, and then I, I almost... I laugh every time I read that, right? I'm like, no, it doesn't cost anything. Just send us your game. We don't promise to review it, but that's your best bet. Send us the game. No check. Don't send any money. I, don't th I think one time a company sent me a dollar that said bribe on it as a joke. And I think I didn't even review that game then because I was still a little concerned about that. Um, but again, I think this is a much bigger uh, mountain in a molehill that people are making about this because I don't see that there's any evidence of this happening. Again, you can argue about the paid previews for Kickstarter all you want, but they're usually labeled clearly as such, the ones that they sell are, they say paid preview. Um, but I'm not seeing reviewers, and I talk to a lot of these reviewers. I don't know everything that goes on behind all their scenes. I really don't. But I don't know any of them firsthand. I don't know about anyone getting paid to do reviews. And I, it's bothersome to me to see that this keeps coming up all the time as if people know these facts. 
And again, I can't speak to the other reviewers, but I can definitely speak to Dice Tower, and we don't get paid to review games. And in fact, you'll see companies that sponsor our show for various reasons, like Yellow sponsored our live Essen show that we did at the convention, Stronghold sponsored our Gen Con show, different uh, companies sponsored the cruise, and I'll trash their games if I think they're bad. They're sponsoring the show in those various ways definitely doesn't affect our reviews. And that is something I pride myself on. We give you the straight up facts. We do, we tell you our, well facts, our opinions, I guess, the straight up opinions. We give you our opinions. We don't accept money to change our views on anything. And in fact, I'm always really clear when I'm talking to a company and any kind of sponsorship deal that that is the case. And they always respond the same way. They always say, good, that's what we want. So stop spreading these rumors. Or if you know that someone's getting paid, then say it, call it out, but don't make these vague insinuating things like, oh, well, some reviewers are getting paid. Who? Say it. Otherwise, you're just spreading rumors and that's wrong. On the other hand, Happy New Year. All right. Any update of a Grim Forest review? I think I'm reviewing it this week. <laughs> I think so. I have to look at the schedule, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm reviewing it this week. If it's not this week, it's next week. Um, will we ever see a content creator crossover live play? Well, we have. We brought in Rado. We brought in Rodney Smith to play some games. We may do more of that in the future and bring people in, but it is a very expensive process to do that. We'll have a few of our contributors. Some of them are coming in for our live marathon next week. Uh, I think Mark Street will be there, Robert uh, Geislinger, uh, Mandy Hutchinson, Graham Anderson, um, Roy Canaday, and his co-host. Um, they will all be there along with all of us and Kenny and Jason and stuff and Melody. So you'll see those people. But flying people in, that's really expensive to do that. So we will do it occasionally. We have, um, but I don't have any current plans. I have thoughts, but that's about the extent of it. Have you considered a plum velvet suit to match the hat? Um, this isn't plum. This is blue. Uh, I, I have a purple hat, though, a plum hat. Um, I do have a blue suit coat that matches this. Um, I thought about getting a green suit. I have a red suit coat. I thought about getting a green one. My wife just rolled her eyes, so I'm not sure if I will or not. Did you get the uh, Sheep Faction in Smash Up? I did. In fact, that's one of my daily unboxings. I think that you will see that daily unboxing next week. And that will be actually the only review that I do because it's just a faction. I'd rather there be many shorter live playthroughs and a couple of long 24 to 30 hour marathons. But what if you could have both? I was surprised that Heroes of Land Air and Sea wasn't a Miami Dice episode. What did Sam think of it? He didn't play that, but I think we're going to rectify this by having Sam play it on the live marathon. I think Roy will teach it to him. So Roy Canaday and, and, and co. will be reviewing that with Sam. When is the next Dice Tower Cruise? It's gonna be February. We are gonna be opening up the Dice Tower Cruise registration in two waves. We're gonna open it up to the people who went on the last Dice Tower Cruises first. They have first right to come back, and then we will open it up. Keep an eye out for that. I'll mention it on our show. We'll mention it on Twitter, and we'll mention it on the Dice Tower Audio Show. I fully expect it to sell out. Um, if demand is extremely great, we'll see what we can do to fix that, but for now, it's going to be in February. Exact dates will be announced once the deal is signed. Uh, let's see. How much time does it take between you filming the reviews and when the videos are released? It all depends. Usually I don't review a video more than two weeks before the video is released. But um, it's usually same week. What happens is I come in Monday and I start reviewing, or start making videos anyway. 
Um, and then Derek starts editing the videos and we move on from there. Sometimes I review them the week before, especially if we're going on a trip, then they're being reviewed the week before. So like this week, for example, I am reviewing, I don't know, like 10 different games, but I'm also doing five videos that aren't reviews. Well, that's what I spent this morning on. The five videos that weren't reviews, I worked on them, got them done, wrote out my list. There's a lot of research that goes into making these things and recorded those. So they're finished. And then when I'm done with this live Q&A around two o'clock, I will start doing some reviews. I have some reviews that are coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday, right? So those are the first ones that I do. And then I'll work on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Then I'll come back the next day and work on some more reviews. And I do all this as quickly as possible because there's other things I have to do every week. So like, for example, this week, get that Kickstarter finished. That's my main priority. You said in Board Game Breakfast that you'll focus on quality in 2018. Can you expand on what that means? Well, we're going to get some, we're going to work on, um, Again, I gotta be careful what I say here because I don't wanna promise something and then we don't have it. One of the things that we wanna do is there's an overhead boom uh, camera. I wanna make that camera better. I wanna make the cameras and stuff that we're using for live, like even me and Eric back and forth, I wanna work on that and make that better. I might put some money into the intros and outros of the shows and get that sort of thing better. There's just various little things all over the place that I wanna do to make our quality better. I just gotta be careful not to promise something and then it doesn't show up. But hopefully, again, that you can see even over this year, hopefully you'll see that things are getting better and better. Even our live, even this, this is a live Q&A where Derek and Sam and Z have off today because it's New Year's Day. I came in on my own record and I set all this up and I'm doing it myself and this is way better quality than what we used to have. I should say I set it up myself. Melody was here and helped me a little bit, but for the most part. Um, let's see here. How long does it take to wrap your head around a somewhat complex game like Feast for Odin? I'm pretty sure it's a solid game, and it took me about 60 to 90 minutes. Oh, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty solid gamer, and it took me 60 to 90 minutes for the rule book and two to two and a half hours to play. Well, that, the time it takes me to play a game usually depends on other people. I would say the longest it takes me to wrap my head around the game is an hour. I know it sounds egotistical, and I don't mean it to be that way. I read really quickly. And that helps me understand a lot of games, but most of the time I have to start playing. But once I start playing, it comes together. There are a few games where there are the, the rare game where I'll be like, even after a play, I'm like, what just happened? But usually halfway through, I'm like, got it. This makes sense. I mean, I might be playing awfully or terribly, but I, they usually click for me pretty quickly. What are paid previews exactly? Essentially, they're advertisements. There's, we're not pulling any punches on that one. And uh, the paid preview is just someone showing you a Kickstarter game um, before it's on Kickstarter, and you can look at it, and hopefully by uh, showing it to you, you can decide whether you will buy uh, Kickstarter it or not. Um, we, Mark is in charge of that. He picks which games he wants to go over, and they basically pay for that. It is completely different than a review. A review, I pick what I'm doing. Will there be any more live RPG games in 2018? That depends if we get to some of our Kickstarter goals. Do you ever use board games as illustrations in your sermons or teaching at church? It, I would say on average, one every two years. It's just not the right place for it. Um, I should mention by now that if you continue to ask the same question, it does not mean it's going to get answered at all. Um, I don't answer every question. I apologize. I just go through and pick the questions I liked. PAX Unplugged in Philly didn't make your top 10 gaming moments. Boo. Oh, no. I had a great time there. But I didn't have any gaming moment there that, like, at the con itself. I played a lot of fun games there. That made my top 10. No big deal. Again, there's 365 days in a year. I didn't say that the whole the PAX is one of my favorite conventions I went to this year, and I had a great time there and had a lot of fun playing with a lot of people. Some of those, I played with people who didn't know the Dice Tower from anything, and I didn't even tell them about the Dice Tower. I just wanted to teach them some games. It was a lot of fun. Um, what 
What time is the Kickstarter going to launch on Thursday? My goal is for it to be noon Eastern Standard Time. My friends and I are taking the leap in the Cosmic Encounter. Do you suggest we start with a base set or buy an expansion or two? Start with the base set and see what you think. Tom, I remember you said you sometimes use D12s in place of D6s in your games. Are these customs ones with two of each number? Yes. And where would I get them? I don't know where you would get them. They were called double D6s, I think. Um, it was a Kickstarter. That's how I got them initially. And they were called double six dice. And I am not sure where you can buy them online. Maybe it's one of their updates. Buy double six dice. Maybe they're sold somewhere online. They're on Amazon, maybe? Nope. I don't know. Maybe someone else in the comments can tell you. Um, what color lightsaber would you construct if you were a Jedi or a Sith? Pink. Um, I noticed that you no longer use the 360 setup. Was that just an impractical fad? Is it put away or sold off? It's just put away. I haven't sold it off yet. The 360 thing didn't really take off, right? I thought it was a neat concept. Like, hey, I'm going to a convention. I'm doing a 360 camera. It wasn't seamless. Like the stitch, I'm, I was using two cameras and when they, and they were, it was stitching them together. It wasn't seamless. So I would need to get a better camera for that. And people just didn't, first of all, people didn't realize we're doing a 360 thing. So they're like, well, stop showing your feet. What's this horrible video? And we would put the name, we'd say, this is a 360 degree thing in the, the title. I would say it when we started it, we'd put it in the description, and people would still like complain. And they just didn't get that many views. I was like, wow, these are huge video files. They take a lot of work to put together. Let's just hold off. I'm holding off till the technology becomes more widespread. I said, I always wanted like, I'm always like, what can we do that's different? What's unique and interesting? 360, no one's doing that. We did it, no one copied us. <laughs> you can tell when we do something that's good because people copy it. I mean, there's definitely people out there who do three people sitting next to each other going through a top 10. I think we, I'm, I'm, I'm not claiming that top 10s are mine. People have done top 10s for ages. But the whole three guys in front of a wall of games arguing back and forth, I think I can claim that a little. And that's fine. I don't mind if people copy the ideas that we do. Then, well, I mean, maybe I mind a little, but not, not a lot, really. You know, and so I figure if people are copying what we do, it's successful. No one else is doing the 360 videos. Nobody in the board game arena. Nobody. And no one has complained that we've taken them down. And you might say, I like them, but yeah, you're in the vast minority. Are all live events going to be simulcast on Twitch or are you going to focus on some subset? We're going to try to live simulcast them on both. We're going to learn about Twitch and figure out how to do it. Are there any games you are excited for in 2018? There are a lot of games I'm excited for in 2018. And that's an easy thing to talk about because that will come out. We're going to do a top 10 list on that that you'll see next week. Have you ever accidentally cheated in the game? Oh, I'm sure plenty of times. With you having retried a part of Legacy of Dragonhold you already did, do you think it's worth replaying or do the decisions make very little difference? I don't know that they make very little difference. Like I think they'll certainly affect your health and stuff and maybe some of the items you find. I won't know that for sure until I finish with the game. Then I can tell you more about the replayability. What does your live show, Dice Tower Tonight, bring you and Eric that your audio podcast doesn't? A couple things. First of all, it's live, right? And so since it's live, you guys can do questions and we can even talk back and forth to the live audience. Second, it's visual. We'll be like, hey, look at these cool component. Oh, wait, do you see that? That's a new bumper sticker you can get for your car in our upcoming Dice Tower Kickstarter campaign. Oh, we're also making this guy a sticker. And our new slimmed version of the logo 
or Eric or Mandy or Suzanne. This one's smaller than the rest because of, that was an accident. I'll make it bigger. Do you think Dice Star Wars Legion will kill Imperial Assault? I do not think that at all. Um, 360 needs a few years to grow, but I think it's just the next 3D television fad. Yeah, it's hard to tell with these things, right? Like 3D television didn't take off at all. I always, I love new technology. I always look at new technology. I remember right when I graduated from college that it was Divix, I think it was called, where they had these CDs that you bought this player and you would buy these really cheap DVDs and then you, or like really cheap, and then you would rent them. And if you wanted to watch it again, you could rent them longer. And I thought, wow, what a cool idea. I should buy one of these. And I never did. I was pretty poor. And I'm glad I didn't, because it didn't take off. And now you can do essentially the same thing with Amazon or, or iTunes. You can just rent movies on your, on your TV, which is the same thing. Some things take off and some things don't. I'm going to try new things all the time because I want to see what will take off and what won't. And I think waiting too long to see if it takes off is problematic. But like Periscope, I messed with Periscope for a while on, on, on Twitch. I was like, oh, this might be the next big thing. It's not. So what is the next big thing? Facebook live streaming seems like it might be a big thing at this point in time. Unfortunately, we cannot live stream through Facebook and YouTube at the same time, which is really a bummer. I mean, if I could figure it out, I would because Facebook streaming seems like a pretty useful thing to do. Has anyone ever gotten a Dice Tower tattoo? Yes. Um, you know the Dice Tower Rook um, King of Tokyo monster? A guy came by at Essen and showed me that he got it. That was pretty neat. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen like a Dice Tower logo. I'm sure someone has one somewhere. I may have even seen it. I don't recommend it. What if you turn out and you hate the show later on? Are either you, Sam, or Z currently working on designing a new game? Sure. What's your favorite lawn game? Cornhole, washers, croquette? Well, that's a good question. My favorite lawn game. I'm assuming by cornhole you're meaning bean bags. A cornhole and bean bags are pretty much the same thing. That might be it. Let me think. Horseshoes? Eh, I can live or take horseshoes. Um, bocce? I do like bocce. It might be bocce. I don't like croquette at all. Um, lawn darts are okay. Um, I'm going to go with bocce with a, a close second being bean bags because my, my dad built these beanbag things when we were kids and we would throw beanbags and we had a lot of fun doing that. To Samantha and Zia, maybe. Uh, let's see here. What do you know about the new century? I heard breakfast, but Come on, give us some rumors. There's not rumors. They're actually showing a whole lot about the game online. You can go to the Plan B website, and they show you a ton of the game. They'll probably have the rules up very, very soon, I imagine. I will do my best to get an early review copy of that one because I really like Century. Oh, wow. I'm surprised people like the stickers as much as they do. I like stickers a lot, but I'm just always... To me, stickers are just really cool. I like stickers. Yes, I like this one a lot. And here's, here's what I'm excited about the sticker, right? Let's make it bigger. Let's add more characters. Do you agree? I think so. Um, how much money would have to be given to Dice to let Jason sing? I don't know, a million? Um, What do you think of the Scythe new expansion? Sounds crazy. It does, but man, I'm excited, right? It comes with modules and with a kind of sort of legacy thing to it. 
I'm intrigued. Look, I was just talking about this. I was talking about something else on one of the videos I did today. Stegmeier's a genius. He really is. Look at Viticulture. And this is where I was talking about it. Viticulture came out in 2013. That's five years ago. Didn't get hardly any buzz at all. Now, very popular game. When Scythe, by the time he announced Scythe, people were frothing at the mouth to play this game. And people are still playing Scythe later. How many games from 2016 are still being played today? Not many, but Scythe definitely is. Um, and then Charterstone, I think, might have the same thing happen to it. In fact, I need to get that Charterstone upgrade kit ordered. Um, what do you do in players and social deduction games like the Resistance shun you for not playing optimally? I'm okay with that because I don't want to play with them either. <laughs> If you think there's an optimal way to play these games and there's some agreed on thing that when this situation so and so must play this way, I'm out. Do you watch any sports? Not really. Um, I don't dislike watching sports. If uh, someone invites me to a game of, of uh, a stadium, I will go watch them. I think my favorite sport to watch is baseball. I like baseball a lot. I know it's slow and boring for a lot of people, but I like it. I also like soccer or football um, for much of the world. I like watching Olympic sporting events a lot. I think that's probably my favorite. Just pick an event, and you know, not all of them. Some I don't really like. I don't really like synchronized swimming that much. Um, but. And there's a few other ones. Like I don't watch. I don't like watching the weightlifting stuff that much. Some, the slower stuff. But I like the Summer Olympics. I like most of them. I like the archery a lot. I like soccer. Those Olympic soccer. There's just a lot of Olympic sports I like watching. I just don't watch sports that often. I wonder if flick them up would translate scale to lawn size. Like you throw things around. That's not a bad idea. Do you think 2018 will experience an overall decline in board game sales? Do you think the reviewer branch of the industry will experience a decline? I hope not, and I hope not. <laughs> I don't think the board game, there's no indication that board game sales are going to go down. As for the reviewer branch, I hope not. We'll find out Thursday, I guess, right? Uh, let's see. What type of crust is the key lime pie on? It's like on a cookie crust, the ones that I like. So, key lime last night. Which saddens me because it's the last key lime I'm going to have in a very long time. I've been cutting back on sweets across the board lately because I'm trying to lose weight after the Dice Tower cruise I started that. I don't, again, I don't do New Year's resolutions, so it was as soon as the cruise was over. I took a break last night, New Year's Eve, I wanted to eat what I want, although I couldn't even eat that much. I was like, all right, I can eat what I want. I ate a few uh, alligator bites, and um, then I started eating some vegetables. What's wrong with me? Um, but I did eat key lime pie. So we had, these are the key lime pies we had. Now, now realize, these all are base key lime pie, and these other flavors are added, which you might say, that's no good. They all are winners. So. We had two seasonal ones. We had eggnog key lime pie. We had orange cranberry key lime pie. Those were our two seasonals. Then we had boring key lime pie. That's not boring. It's still amazingly delicious, but just key lime pie. And that was the only pie that we completely ran out of. Um, I, gave out, I gave out really small pieces because it's really rich and delicious. And there was only, I don't know, we gave out 50 pieces or so. Then we had chocolate peppermint key lime pie. Now that one might sound bad, but it's so good. Um, we had strawberry key lime pie with meringue. We had berry berry key lime pie. We had banana key lime pie with chocolate chips. I'm not a big banana fan, but this was good. Then we had my personal favorite. I had her make me a custom one. Um, guanabana or soursop, same thing. Guanabana key lime pie with chocolate chips and meringue. When I finished eating it, I almost wept a bit, not because it was so good, which, you know, but just because I knew it was. I, I left it there at church. I said, on our, if we have an evening meal on Wednesdays, I said, we'll leave it there for dessert, and I will no longer eat any more of it. I was very sad. My wife did not seem as sad as me, because she thinks I should lose some weight. All right, what are your top 10 movies of 2017? 
2017 movies by the numbers. All right, I'll pull these up and I'll, I don't know how many, how many of these I've seen. So let me just go through them and I'll tell you. Um, Get Out was interesting. I didn't really like it. Logan was a good movie, but it was just so depressing. Kong Skull Island, eh. I liked it, but I just thought that the Samuel Jackson character was silly. I did, I did enjoy it, though, so maybe that would be in my top ten. Beauty and the Beast, I really liked that one. I thought it was, a, it was a note for note for the cartoon for the most part. And the new songs didn't really add anything, but it was really well done. really liked it. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Pies of Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Wonder Woman. Um, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, there's a lot of movies I have not seen. Didn't see that, didn't see that, didn't see that, didn't see... Didn't see Blade Runner 249, but I'd never seen the original Blade Runner either. Thor Ragnarok is my favorite movie of the year. And then Star Wars Last Jedi would be number two. Justice League was okay. Um, huh. Well. Yeah. Let me see. I'm going to go through these. I didn't see Jumanji yet. My kids saw. I don't go see that many movies, guys, so I'm not sure this is split. I did not like the parts of it I saw. I didn't see Transformers. I don't watch horror movies. I do want to see Murder on the Orient Express because I like that story a lot. Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. I fell asleep halfway through, but my kids said it was good. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I'm really uh, not much. Oh, The Great Wall? That was okay. I didn't hate it, but it was a lot. Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. I really liked that movie. I know a lot of people didn't, and I know the two main characters had no chemistry and were kind of just there, but the set pieces were gorgeous. I really liked the stuff around that one. Um, yeah, most of these I haven't seen, guys. I apologize. Actually, I don't apologize. I don't care if I see all the movies that come out in a year. The Circle, I saw that one. I didn't like the ending of The Circle. Yeah, there's so many of these I haven't seen because who cares? Okay. Anyway, let's go back to comments. Sorry. Um, by the way, again, I, I guess I have to say this every Q&A, but just to clarify, someone says, have you heard any information about something? If I hear any information about stuff, I will, I will tell you in the news segment, for sure. Or we'll post it on Dice Tower News. If, we, if I can talk about it. If I can't talk about it, well, I'm not going to suddenly be like, well, in, in, uh, here, just, just between us. No, I can't do that. So, um, <laughs> What do you think of The Last Jedi? Did it ruin your childhood? Man, I don't want to get into this war. I mean, this was on Facebook. This was like, I was like, wow, these guys are taking it seriously. All I can say was I was absolutely flabbergasted when I went to the internet and found out that people did not like the movie. I was surprised. There are some movies I watch on like, like Thor Ragnarok. I came out of Thor Ragnarok, I was like, I love that. But I can see how some people are gonna think it's too silly. But I loved it. When I came out of Star Wars Last Jedi, I said, that is possibly the best Star Wars movie I've ever seen. Man, the fans are so happy. All those fans were complaining in episode seven that it was just a retread. They wanted him to get away from it. They're gonna love this. When I went to the internet and saw that people were hating it, saying it was worse than the first three movies, that blew my mind. I could not understand it. I went back and watched it a second time with that in mind, with all the problems that people listed, and I still loved it. And I, I just, ha personal taste aside, I get that people don't like things. But what I don't get is people saying, plot inconsistencies and this doesn't work in the Star Wars universe and yet they love The Empire Strikes Back which did the exact same things, had lots of plot inconsistencies, had lots of weird things that were not yet established. It made up new rules. There's only been like seven of these movies. If they came out and made a movie that said midichlorians do not exist, everyone would be like, woo, this movie basically did that. Everyone would be like, woo, they, you, you don't care if they rewrite some of the history. I, I don't get it. But you know what? I don't really care. The movie made a ton of money. It's the highest grossing movie of 2017. It's, or the highest grossing domestic movie of 2017. Sure, there was a drop off from the last Star Wars, but there's obviously more. They gave the director his own trilogy movies. I will be first in line to see those. 
Um, I know people hate Disney these days. It's, they're fun to hate because they're the biggest player on the block, right? But their treatment of the Marvel Universe and their treatment of the Star Wars Universe has thrilled me. I like them. You may not. I don't think any less of you for not liking them. You can like or not like stuff that you choose. It's no big deal to me. I'm just glad that enough people also like them so that there will be more of them. And that makes me happy. Sure, I'm shallow, I guess. The movies I like never get voted to be an Oscar, what have you. Uh, and this is, me and Z were talking about this, it's such a weird thing to me. In the movie industry, it seems very specific. Like, the critics will say, these are the best movies of the year. But if you go talk to most people, they'll say, no, these are the best movies of the year. They don't match, right? It doesn't happen like in the board game industry. We critics don't get together and pick games, and everyone's like, what? You're picking games that none of us like. No, we kind of match up with people for the most part. It's just odd. TV matches up with people for the most part. It's, it's movies where it's different. I'm really rabbit trailing. Um, because it will affect your show in a real way, what's your stand on net neutrality? I'll be honest. I don't understand everything about net neutrality. I think, from a lot of people that I trust and respect and like, that net neutrality is a good thing and that this, this recent change is bad. I'm gonna, we're going to have to wait and see. My hope is that it will be struck down in court and what have you. But if there's one reason that I think net neutrality is fine, it's because Comcast says it's bad. And we all know that Comcast is the spawn of the devil. And if, I mean, if Comcast told me that my kids were wonderful, I would be so distrustful of my kids suddenly. I'd be like, what? What'd they do? That's how much I despise Comcast. So if Comcast is for it, I'm against it. If they're against it, I'm for it. That's not necessarily maybe true, but wow. It just seems to be the truth. I'm going to wait to find more information. The sky has not fallen yet. The dice hour is not going out of business. We'll wait and see, and we do things one at a time. I can't bemoan changes that have happened. Instead, I can work to make things better in the future. Is there a coconut key lime pie? I think so. I never knew there were so many versions of key lime pie. Oh, there is. There are so many. Um, actually, let me... Uh, Let me tell you all the flavors that she makes because it's just that. Uh, actually, I don't even know if her, is there many? Because I, I told you some of the ones that were there. Uh, do they have a picture of her, of her menu? Let me look, let me look. There it is. Yeah, she does make coconut. I've not had her coconut one yet. I'm not a huge coconut. Guava, I've had that one. It's good. Mamie, that's good. Um, tamarind is really good. Passion fruit is amazing. Mango is good. Raspberry is good. Um, pina colada is good. Ginger, I haven't had ginger. I don't know if ginger key lime would be good or not. I'll have to try it though. Um, well, those are all the flavors she makes. That's still a lot. But she said she'd make pretty much any flavor. Uh, so I was like, all right, what about cranberry? And she was like, oh, I already make an orange cranberry. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I ran out of ideas. I'm gonna go back to her with pomegranate. That's my next idea. Actually, I was very, I was talking to her yesterday because I went to pick up all the pies. And she said she's moving to a, a homeless shelter near where we live. And she's going to be uh, employing some of the homeless people to help her as she makes the pies, which I thought was a really neat thing. I noticed that Target has less recognizable designer games and brands I don't recognize. Are these new companies or are they generic brands similar to Market Pantry? I'm not sure, actually. I was at, I went to Toys R Us and Target this past week, and I checked out both places, right? So I said, okay, I'm going to look at Toys R Us, see if there's any games that are there that I want to pick up. Toys R Us had about three or four that I was like, eh, I didn't get any. Um, and Target had more, but nothing that I was like really, you know, th thoughtful about. I did take pictures of all the games I found interesting. I want to do more research on them. But well, then we got caught up because my family saw the Dice Tower logo on a few of the games and they were in, 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 enthralled by that. So was I. It is kind of neat to see that in the store. Um, have you played any Breath of the Wild downloadable content? I only played the first stuff. I have not played the second one. I mean, we have it. I just haven't played it. 
What's your favorite type of hat? Probably a I do like cowboy hats and fedoras, or the ones that are in between the Indiana Jones hat, which I guess is a fedora. Um, they're probably my favorites. Dice Tower keeps talking about Hanuma Hanumani Koji and Shadows of Kyoto weekly. That ain't Dice Tower. That's Sam Healy. Let's be clear on that. Um, and these games can't be bought in the USA and believe never have. Why? Actually, uh, we did announce a few weeks ago, so, so I forget the name of the company. Someone's picking him up and bringing him over, so you'll be fine. The circle had promised it has a, a stupid ending. I, it's kind of where I'm at too, right? I was expecting the ending to be different than it was, and I don't know. You know, though, a lot of these uh, things were like, your whole life is on display for people. I'm like, that would never happen. But then I look at Facebook and I see that some people are already doing that. They're essentially putting their whole life on display before people. I'm like, well, maybe that will happen. How did you get Marina Sirtis to say, shut the door? I did. Jason did that. I always tell Jason, I'll be like, Jason, there is no way you will get this person to say, shut the door. And he's like, I will do it. <laughs> and it always happens. Have you read any books by Ted Decker? I've read some of his stuff. I don't really like Ted Decker's stuff. I know you drink tea. What kind? I drink all sorts of kinds of teas. I do like teas with caffeine. I want to get a tea that gives me a bite. Uh, Earl Grey, uh, ch uh, chai tea, black tea, English breakfast tea. Um, if I'm in the mood for an off-brand tea, I do like eggnog and cinnamon, uh, peppermint teas. But for the most part, if I go to like a restaurant and like, what tea would you like, sir? I almost always say Earl Grey or just black tea. I really like the black teas and the red teas are my favorites. Green teas are okay. I don't dislike them, but I'd rather have the other teas instead of them. Cream and sugar, um, no, I usually just add some sweetener. Try not to put too much sugar in my tea. I know sweetener's not good for you, blah, 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 but sugar's worse. Um, I don't put milk or cream in my tea. That's definitely not an American thing for the most part. I've had it with milk in. When I went to England, everyone put milk in their tea, and that's fine. Uh, I, I can handle it. I can handle pretty much anything, but I kind of like them black. Are you planning on watching your Royal Rumble this year? I don't know. I normally, I normally do, actually. I don't know what's been happening in wrestling. I, I only watch the Royal Rumble, so... I don't know. I don't know why I like the Royal Rumble so much. I, I, I almost wish it was real. Like, I'd love to see like a real Royal Rumble. Can you last from number one? I don't know. It's the only, it's the only uh, <laughs> um, wrestling event I watch, I think. Do you, do, you, do you agree, Tom, that board games should you start using different types of dice? I see the Dark Crystal does, but I haven't heard anything on it. hope it becomes a trend, like D8s and D10s. Lots of games use that. It's not just Dark Crystal. I don't know anything about that game. Um, lots of games use D8s and D10s and different things. But realize they are more expensive. D6s are the cheapest dice to get made. Easy, because companies have them and publish, the manufacturers have those molded. They're easy to get done. They're easy to throw into games. Even custom ones are often cheaper than getting other molds for other dice in, too. And also, are you putting another die in a game for a good reason? What's the reasoning behind putting those dice in that game? I'm all for it, but again, I don't think this is a problem. There's lots of games that use odd, interesting dice. Tom, your Comcast logic is sound. I really think so. I want someone to... Um, I want someone to come here and like, all right, tell me some good stuff about Comcast, like a heartfelt story, like Comcast was like Santa Claus or something. Because I looked up like worst companies in America, and Comcast is like number one. Every time, every list, I think. Uh, anyhow, I'm getting all worked up. Do you know why the Dungeons & Dragons live stream was 360p? Yes, that was just a mistake on our part. We did a lot of changes. We were setting up the cameras and doing things to make changes for that, and that's just a setting that for some reason we missed. 
Melody was watching the feed, so I mentioned 360p. She didn't really know what that meant or anything, and that's why we didn't notice this was done. I'm really sorry about that. It really bugs me. Fortunately, it wasn't on a board game, so it wasn't like we needed it to be high resolution, but I still wish that it was. Uh, as far as I can help it, that won't happen again. We fixed the problem, so like for our upcoming marathon, you will see that fixed. Ooh, rhubarb key lime pie. That's a good idea. I'll ask her. I saw you enjoyed Unstable. Did you hear about the... Okay, yeah, never mind. No, I'm not. Um... We should get Sam a Fez. He would look good in one. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of fezes. I don't know. Doctor Who likes them. But the thing about a fez is a fez is fine. It's a jaunty hat, I guess. But it doesn't do anything, right? At least these hats, even a fedora, it keeps the sun out of my eyes. There's really some reason for it. Or if it's raining, the rain keeps out of your face, too. They, they actually ha they're, they're, There's a reason for them. A hat without a brim doesn't do anything. That's fine, I guess. I mean, some people like doing that. But I like my hat to have a brim. Okay, everyone's complaining about the uh, movies. I think the movie is, uh, uh, they're telling me all the problems with the last day. You're not going to change my mind. I just liked it. But more importantly than me liking it, my kids really liked it. Not as much as I like other movies. They tend, you know, my girls, they're not as big of sci-fi people as I am. But they all liked the movie. They thought it was great. They thought it was fun and entertaining. And I'm glad they liked it. They don't see all these plot holes and stuff. I'm cool with that. Um, what country culture does breakfast the best? Germany. Oh my goodness, the breakfast in Germany are amazing. What's the last concert that you went to? I don't know, guys. This is one of those holes in my life, I guess. I've hardly gone to any music concerts my whole life. I've never been to Broadway. I, ah, it bugs me some, right? I want to go to these things. I love to go to them, but I will not go to Broadway without my wife. No way. Um, and they have Broadway shows in Miami, and me and my wife would like to go to them, but they're just really expensive. Um, and so, I mean, that plus, I mean, my kids are old enough now, we could leave them behind. Maybe we'll do it someday, now that, uh, you know, Melody and Amy are old enough to babysit the other kids and all. But, yeah, it's kind of like my bucket list. Man, I would love to go to those, but they are pretty pricey. I'd love to go to one, get great seats, and see a whole thing. I would get misty-eyed in it because I, I love musicals so much. I really do. Um, but I just listen to them and... I was really excited. They had a Broadway like streaming thing online. I was like, oh, wow, it's great. You know, I'm going to subscribe to this. And then I looked at their selection, and it wasn't even that big. I want to like see every Broadway show. Why can't people record them and stream them? I would watch them all. But I would still love to be there. Being somewhere is just electric. I just, someday it will happen. Someday I will be able to go to one of these things. I'm thinking 10 years, but then I will go to them at least on a biannual basis. Um, oh, I should also, <laughs> I shouldn't have even brought up Last Jedi because now there's a bunch of people who are, who are continually talking about how bad the movie is. Nothing you can say will change my opinion on how much I like the movie. So, I don't care what everyone else thinks. I don't care what an actor has said or may not said or where they twist people's words to make them say what they want to say. I don't care. I liked it. And that is the last I'm going to say on that because I think we're just going to keep going on and on and on and on and on. Oh, that's true. A fez would keep Sam's head from getting sunburned. <laughs> that's true. It will keep your head from getting sunburned. As a French person, I'm offended. You said Germans make the best breakfast. 
I've not been to France for breakfast, so I cannot compare. Someone has asked me of all the places I've been to, and that is the, my answer for that. I'm sure that France breakfasts are amazing. Um, what Broadway show would you want to see? Oh, there's so many. Probably Les Mis, right? Because, I mean, that's a definitive one. I know that one a lot. I've wanted to see Matilda in recent years. I'd like to see the Mary Poppins one. I'd like to see The Lion King. The Disney stuff kind of appeals to me. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Hamilton, of course. Uh, I would like to see... I'd like to see some of the older ones, too. I don't care, you know, the old Oklahoma and stuff like that. I wouldn't mind seeing those also. I just like seeing things like that. 76 trombones, you know, whatever. I just like the music. Did you ever go to Nobles when you lived in PA? I did go to Nobles. That was a very fun time in my life. I went there once, but it's one of those moments from my childhood that I remember very strongly. Did you see The Greatest Showman? I did not, but my kids, I think, have seen it twice now, and it's like on f full auto repeat on their music, so I will probably see it when it comes out on video. If you can only choose one of these, Sentient, Azul, or Sagrada. I've not played Sentient. I've only played Azul and Sagrada. Between the two of those, I would get Azul, but I like Dragon Castle better than both. That's the one I would pick. Um, are you excited for Disney to get Fantastic Four and X-Men character rights back to the Marvel movies? Of course I am. That's a really neat thing. I hope it happens, but I mean, well, to, I mean, hopefully it, they do it in a nice streamlined way. Um, will you guys do another version of a mega game at a future Dice Tower event? Uh, possibly. We'll have to wait and see. Phantom of the Opera? Sure, I'd like to see that one too. Am I caught up on questions? This has never happened. It's probably because it's a holiday, and so there's not as many people asking questions. But there's still three minutes left. Quick, ask some questions. Meanwhile, we'll answer something. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Check out your local community theater. It's much cheaper, and the quality is on par with Broadway. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, do we even have a local community? I don't think we have one here in Homestead. <laughs> uh, we might. I don't think we do. I'd have to go to another area, I think. Why do you dislike cats so much? Nah, I don't really. Um, I don't like cats, right? I think cats are... I don't like cats because I think cats are like... Pfft, you. And cats just aren't very emotive and responsive. It's like people in real life, the people who are cold and distant. I tend to like people who are warm and, and, and loving. You know, that's how I am with, and I know, and every cat owner has always told me their cat is different, and then I see, meet their cats, and they're not. Um, but it doesn't matter. I don't just, I mean, that's not like I want to kill cats or see, you know, when something happens to a cat, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Although the, the, well, the, uh, Eight-legged freaks, the cat thing there did make me laugh. But for the most part, I don't, I mean, in real life, I don't want to see harm come to cats. I don't hate them and wish them death and destruction on them. It's just a shtick I have now where I say I don't like cats. I still think, in the Bible, and this is not strong theology, but I think Satan, who went to the serpent to tempt Adam and Eve, he went to the cat first, and the cat was like, psst, I ain't helping you. I'm pretty sure it happened. But anyhow. Um... Holy moly, you guys, that's a lot of questions now. Well, now you're only getting a few of these. All right, favorite potato chip, salt and vinegar. Favorite soda, I don't drink soda anymore much, but if I did, red cream or blueberry cream, actually. Do you play any instruments? I play the piano. Um, are you still enjoying Star Wars Destiny? Interestingly enough, that's coming up in my look back video this week. Um, what will be your best board game company pick of 2017? Off the top of my head, I might want to say Renegade. They did a really good job in 2017. Uh, but it's hard to argue with the Stonemaier games also. Um, are we coming to UK Games Expo this year? We're planning to. We should be announcing our full list of, well, our list of conventions so far soon. Uh, my first pet was a dog. 
If for some reason we can't back your Kickstarter this month, is there some way for us to send you support later in the year? We will do what we can to make that possible. Would have been nice for our RPG to have an overhead video feed. Well, we thought about it, but uh, we only have three of the, we have three really good cameras, and we didn't want to use a bad camera as a fourth camera. If we can get another HD camera for overhead, then we will use four feeds for the RPG in the future. Do you think your feeling towards dry euros has changed this year? No, I feel pretty the same about these. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. Do you have any games in the pipeline you've had a hand in designing for 2018? So you're asking, is there a game coming out in 2018 that I have a hand in designing? I don't know. I can get you tickets to Hamlet at Pinecrest Gardens playing next week. Hamlet? I've never seen Hamlet. Huh. Big Red? Big Red's a good story. Fa favorite planet? Go? No, no, Go's a board game. Go is not a planet. Um, I think there's a theater called Seminole in Homestead. Maybe there is. I probably should put more effort into looking at this sort of thing. Oh, it's 201. I'm sorry. I got to finish here, folks. Uh, you know what? I really appreciate everybody watching, as always. Uh, I'm excited. There's a lot of things going on this week. We will be doing our best to be doing more live things throughout the week. I'm going to try to do at least one live game every week. or I'm gonna, I'm, my, my goal is to have at least two live things every week, if possible. So keep an eye out for that. We're going to... Uh, i got a lot of things to, to record and go through and stuff before that happens, but I'm excited. I'm excited about the future of Dice Tower. I have s minor things behind the scenes. I made a huge minor change that you guys won't notice quite so frequently, but it's made a major change for us and some, just some infrastructure changes back here that helped a lot. But anyway, folks, I appreciate you watching. See you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. All right! Welcome to the Stadium of Dice Rolling! The yellow team versus the red team, and both of them have brought a ringer. Let's... Let's see our contestants for this matchup. The yellow team is feeling a bit unclassed here. We have two four-sided dice, a six-sided die, a three eight-sided dice, a 10-sided die, a 12, and two 20s. The red team has only one four-sided, no six-sided, two eight-sided, one 10-sided, four 12-sided, and two 20s. Uh, the red side has brought in a D100, while the yellow side has brought in a also a D100, just bigger one. Right now, the officials are wondering. These do not fit into the dice thing. So these guys are going to have to be rolled separately. But meanwhile, let's mix up the matches. And here we go. First match, 10-sided versus an 8-sided. Who will win? Okay, listen, you got to stay inside the thing. It is six to five. Yellow's 10, lost to red's eight. That is a bad omen for the yellow team. Red has won. Next one. A four sided versus a 12. Doesn't seem fair, but let's see what happens. Seven to one. That is two straight losses for yellow. The yellow team is looking sad. A 20 versus a 10. 14 beats a 6. Yellow has their first win on the board. Red is starting, has lost their win streak. Oh, a 4 versus a 20. Not looking good. 1 to 7. Not much of a chance there. These amateurs probably shouldn't be playing as a thing. A 20 versus a 12. 3 to 3. It's a tie. Must re-roll. 5 to 10. The 20 sided has lost. Oh, that is four wins for red versus one win for yellow. It's not looking good. A 20 versus a 10? 2 to 19. Oh, yellow is not looking so good. Five wins to one. An 8 versus a 4-sided? 3 to 4. The 4-sided beat the 8-sided. 
Oh, I'm sorry, yellows. I'm so sorry to see this. It's a 12 verse an 8. The 12 wins, 6 to 5. Oh, my. Yellow has won a single match. Got to stay in. Got to stay in. 2 to 6. Another win for red. And finally, a 12 versus a 12. 4 to 4. It's a tie. 5 to 1. Oh, man, yellow. Red still has 9 members in the match plus these. These both now enter the fray. All right, here we go. Starting with the first one, a 12 versus a 20. Three to three, a tie? Unbelievable. This is the worst playing by a dice team we have ever seen. 14 to three, red has been eliminated. A four-sided versus a hundred-sided. Well, a hundred-sided rolls outside. 74 to 3. Another red die has been eliminated. Switching. 20 verse at 12. 12 to 14. Whew. Red has been eliminated. It might be a comeback. A 20 verse 100. 19 to 81. Not even close. Switching out. A 20 verse an 8. 16 to 5. Yellow team is starting to get excited. They're coming back. The 12 versus 100. 2 to 21. No. All right. The 8 versus 20. 5 to 18. Another red has been eliminated. Very exciting. 100 versus 20. 14 to 12. Oh, yellow streak is over. The 100 sided has been eliminated. And now the 20 must play against the 100 here. This could be it, folks. I'm so scared. A 19. The crowd is quiet. What will happen? <laughs> 10! Oh! The crowd goes crazy! Now the 20 sided against the 12. Nine to five. Working nine to five. Okay, anyway. Oh, two 20 sided. It all comes down to this. Best of three, says the judges. Here we go. Three to 10. Red wins the first round. Oh, no. 14 to six. Yellow wins the second round. They will both be rolled down the same one for the final round. Do, 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 do. Yellow rolls a natural 20, beating Reds 13, and the Yellows swarm him, putting him on their shoulder and carrying him off. For he's a jolly good die roll, for he's a jolly good die roll. For... And then the red team is there, and the hundred-sided die is furious with this 20, and he starts slapping him around, and the yellow die over here comes, and then they get into a fight, and then before he does that, he tweaks his nose. <sighs> And he's shamed, and his students leave him, and he is banished forever from red dice. And then the yellow guy retires and goes off to Japan for some weird reason. Will there be a rematch? We'll have to see next time.